Hey there, y'all. Welcome back to my Dark Souls Filthy Casual Run. My name is Rob. And to start things off, I'm not going to deviate too far from where I'm actually going today. But I do want to drop off an ember I've been carrying around with me for a while to the blacksmith that can actually make some use of it. Doing some post commentary again to kind of cut back on time. And because when I actually did record this part, my throat was pretty sore. I'm still feeling a little cruddy, but I can actually talk now. <laughs> so come on back to an Orlando, which is still dark. Because we destroyed the sun. <laughs> or the illusion of the sun, rather. Come on up here to the giant blacksmith. If you remember back in one of the earlier parts, he talked about bringing him a shiny shiny. Then we get the crystal ember in the Duke's archives. Well, what other shiny could he be asking for? Yeah, this is how you actually get crystal weapons. Not to be confused with the crystal straight sword and great sword that are sold by Dom Hall of Xena, or the uh, crystal shield. This is a weapon reinforcement that will decrease the durability by a lot, but at the same time increasing the attack power of mainly strength weapons. I don't have really any good example to show in this particular video. I got that uh, Balder side sword, but it doesn't look like it's going to do it any favors. Upgrading a Balder side sword to crystal would actually reduce the durability to frickin' 12. Like, it wouldn't even be worth using anymore. So I warp on back to Fire Link Shrine. After uh, exploring Lost Isolith and the Demon Ruins, I decided to go ahead and check back with uh, Quinlana in Blight Town to see if I unlocked any more dialogue with her yet. It actually turns out that I did. I was ex hmm. I have a favor to ask. My mother, the Witch of Isolith, was one of the primeval lords. Her power came from the soul that she found near the first flame. She focused this power to light a flame of her own. But she failed to control it. The flame of chaos engulfed mother and my sisters and molded them into deformed creatures. Only I escaped. And now I am here. But my mother and sisters have been in anguish since. I beseech you. Free mother and my sisters from the flame of chaos. I cannot do it myself. I lack the strength and the bravery. But you, I realize what I am asking. But please, free their poor souls. Mother's ambitions were misguided, no doubt. But surely a thousand years of atonement is enough. A thousand years. I have a favor to ask my mother. Her, her, I can, I rear, her. So that's the last piece of dialogue I was trying to get. Well, young pupil, you must have patience, but do not keep me waiting much longer. At this point, if you fulfill her request and defeat the Witch of Isolith, She'll reward you with uh, one of the best pyromancers in the game, Fire Tempest. <clears throat> of course, if you prefer, you can just kill her for it. She'll drop it even at the beginning of the game, but yeah. So onward, we're going towards the Tomb of the Giants today. And conveniently, Vamos is right here. You can give him this large flame ember. Yeah, it wasn't from New Londo, though. Got a little bit of messed up dialogue there. Presumably, that large flame ember was originally going to be gotten in New Londo. 
and then they change it for one reason or another and yeah they just forgot to alter the dialogue I guess that's a nerve to say that after giving him a new ember but yeah Little weird dialogue things here and there like that at least when it comes to him so hidden body comes in handy down here a lot you can just run past these bone wheel skeletons they barely even notice you make our way back down into pinwheels chamber And this is the dark area where the sunlight maggot would have come in handy. Thankfully, I have cast light, and I believe each cast of that lasts like 10 minutes or so. So both are actually really, really handy for this part. You can just kind of use whichever you choose to. Or if you have a skull lantern at this point, which I don't. Using my fully upgraded, my now fully upgraded Chaos Smy Hander. With 10 humanity and my soft humanity counter, I'm able to one-shot these giant skeletons, which really comes in handy. I'm looking down there at that item. Not really sure how to get it. I'm not the most experienced in exploring uh, the Tomb of the Giants as far as, like, you know, the upper part. And I get invaded down here. I was not expecting that to happen. Getting ganked up on by all these giant skeletons and of course the invader he just runs up and backstabs me and then goes on about his life <laughs> ah, good job sir well played so back to it just to illustrate the the uh, difference in damage from having the 10 humanity in your counter to having none <laughs> go from one shotting the giant skeletons to having to two shot them so that humanity scaling really makes a big difference. I brought up the menu there so you can see my actual attack rating with uh, zero humanity. Fixing to get it back though. Yeah, unfortunately the uh, combination of armor I've got going on does not have a lot of poise so I'm flinching from every little thing up in here. Slide back down to my bloodstain. Try and take on these giant skeletons again. And I'm getting my butt kicked, but they happen to both just jump off, and I'm just kind of like, what? And then an arrow comes through and kills me. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to keep that death in there. That was pretty funny. So once again, you know, th things aren't really... They're not going... uh ideal for me but third time's a charm except I forget right in that moment that I'm not one-shotting the giant skeletons and I tried to heal at the wrong time got punished for it but we're okay that overhead R2 to just pancake him out of the way. Smack that other one off the cliff. And we're good to go at this point. Slide on down here to the Tomb of the Giants bonfire, which you can warp to and from. Definitely a good idea to kindle this bonfire because there's a lot of stuff down here that can and will kill you. As I've already demonstrated.
yeah, this whole time I was kind of worried about being invaded again. But I go on ahead as a human anyway. For this next part, if you saw when we were on our way down, there's an NPC here. You look reasonably sane. What are you doing in the catacombs? Are you a cleric or something? I'm just telling no. No? Really? Hmm. Then I have no qualms telling you. There's a fine stash of treasure right down that hole. I found it first, but, well, we're friends now. I'll split it with you. In any case, have a look. It'll shimmer you blind. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't sound shady at all. <laughs> Sounds like a trustworthy guy. <laughs> Try beating to a pulp. So we take a closer look down that hole and Patches, being Patches, he comes up behind us and gives us a boot to the ass <laughs> and knocks us down, thinking he's really, really smart for having done that. What he doesn't realize is there's a way out of this pit. <laughs> Get a few soul items here from people he's presumably kicked down before. As well as a skull lantern, which... That item does have a chance from dropping from the necromancers in the catacombs, but I didn't get that lucky this particular playthrough. It's a light source that you equip in your left hand that serves, you know, it kind of functions like a shield. You hold it up, and it'll light up your pathway. <clears throat> for the most part I don't really um, advise using this that's the most difficult one to use in my opinion but it does have one benefit when you use it you'll see these little blue lights kind of light up a pathway and if you follow those blue lights it'll guide you through where you're supposed to go in the Tomb of the Giants but it takes up a shield slot so yeah not the most advisable thing to use and of course you know if, if you're not holding it up there's no light you know illuminating your path if you have the sunlight maggot equipped or if you use cast light it doesn't matter what you have in your hand you know it's always lit Yeah, it's been a while, but we finally meet back up with Rhea of Thorland and her two knights, which have gone hollow, unfortunately. Poor guys, they were just young, you know. But they get down here and lose all hope and go hollow, so we have to exterminate them accordingly. I don't know which one is Vince and which one is Nico, but one of them is using a mace and the other one is using a unique axe weapon which is the Crest Axe. You can only get that weapon by either buying it from Patches or killing him for it. Why he has one, who knows. Kinda has this thing against clerics and he kills them for their stuff I guess. pains me to think of the trouble my failings have caused. I am certain that both Vince and Nico are grateful to you. Thank you so very much. Here, these belonged to them. You deserve them more than I. She gives us a miracle replenishment. I am certain that I... Oddly enough, from this point on, you know, now that you've, you know, gotten those two out of her way, at this point, if you warp back to the undead church in the undead parish, she'll be there like she's able to get out by herself. I guess the only thing stopping her was those two knights. Some enemies here, this weird uh, bone column thing, which kind of, you know, slowly makes its way towards you. Kind of remind me of uh, the Pokies from Super Mario World and other Mario games, oddly enough. Except they're made out of bones instead of cactus. So we climb up this ladder. It's conveniently placed here. 
kick that illusory wall down, which just takes us right back around to the bonfire. And also, patches. <laughs> Didn't expect to see me again, did you? No. For heaven's sake, let's not move about, eh? You're still alive. I said I'm sorry. I know. Take this. It proves something, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it might be very tempting to go ahead and beat Patches to a pulp, but I advise keeping him alive for now because he can become useful from this point on. I did you wrong. He's, you know. Once you actually beat the boss to the Tomb of the Giants, Grave Lord Nito. He'll appear back at uh, Firelink Shrine and sell you some pretty unique equipment. I plan on making use of that. But before proceeding with the rest of the area, I want to go back to the Undead Church. I actually want to meet up with uh, Rhea. Get some miracles from her, one of which I've been waiting the whole game to get from her. Yeah, in hindsight, I really didn't have to kill Petrus as early as I did, but... He's kind of a scumbag NPC anyway and didn't serve much use to me, so, yeah. I don't feel that bad about it. I never really feel bad about killing Petrus. Might have been able to get some different dialogue out of him, though. But oh well. <laughs> Good old Zweihander. That's why I love using it. It's just this massive sword that you just smash things with. Yep, good old Rhea sells some of the best miracles in the game. I would be most pleased if that was so. May we discuss miracles then? You can enter the Way of Light with her if you choose to. You can also learn the gesture for prayer. She sells a limited number of divine blessings. I think maybe it's just one. She sells Wrath of the Gods, one of my favorite miracles in the game. As well as everything that Petrus was selling. I've got some souls left over that I don't really have enough to level up with, so I just kind of go through her inventory and just buy a little bit of whatever. Force is like a, uh, it's it's like Wrath of the Gods, except it doesn't do damage. It just kind of knocks enemies over. Get magic barrier, great heal, exert. Not that I really need them particularly, but I mean, why not? Nah, he wanted you to die. There's really no justification for Petrus's actions. He's an evil man. He needed to die. So, back to the Tomb of the Giants. At this point, I'm kind of debating, you know, where, what part of the tomb I want to actually do. So I go ahead and suicide real quick to get myself in uh, undead form so that I'm not invaded while I'm trying to do this. I want to go after the large divine ember that'll allow me to take my halberd, my divine halberd, from plus 5 up to a plus 10 which will eventually really come in handy. <clears throat> I 
And a lot of times, you know, getting to that invert can be a difficult task, but I was actually pleasantly surprised with this run. It actually goes really well, I'm happy to say. So we come back over this away. Pass where you go down into that pit that Petrus kicks you into. There's a section of the tomb that you can go down into to get these, uh, to get this ember. Excuse me. But there is a lot of the giant skeletons guarding it. They're already just kind of swarming around like they see you coming immediately. So I decided to do a back step off the ladder and do a plunging attack. Which worked out pretty good for me. I'm one-shotting these guys with a Chaos Zweihander again. As long as you have the stats to use it, it doesn't scale with any of your strength or dex. It just scales with humanity, so you'll be doing plenty of damage with this weapon as long as you can use it. It doesn't really matter what your build actually is. With the humanity, I think it does, like, close to 700 damage. I know it's over 600. I've got like the bare minimum strength to use it so I can two-hand it and it's just working like a charm. I was actually really surprised how easy that went. And we get the large divine ember. I'll go ahead and highlight the description of it. So obviously, you know, we give the Divine Ember to Andre and the Occult Ember. So it only makes sense we'll be giving the Large Divine Ember to Andre as well. And that one allows you to do the maximum damage with Divine Weapons. Which I'll happily add to my Halberd, and it will come in handy. So I'll climb right back out of there, and now I'm ready to proceed with the rest of the Tomb of the Giants. Just want to recharge my spells and everything real quick. Come up to a new enemy, which... I think they're known as like skeleton dogs, but it really doesn't look like a dog skeleton. It's just a giant skeleton that walks around on all fours somehow or another. Tries to bite you like a dog. We we'll deal with him easily enough. Enemies down here are also very susceptible to pyromancy. You know, if you've got an upgraded pyromancy flame and uh, combustion, great combustion, great fireball, anything like that. It all works really well. So regardless of what build you're running, if you're having trouble, if you just take the time to farm the souls and put them into your pyromancy flame, it'll serve you well. Come up to the second Halbert Knight of the game, which is giving me some grief here because my parries were just not... <laughs> I just wasn't timing them correctly at all. I don't know what I was thinking there, why I thought that that would work. But it didn't. <laughs> In order to take this guy out quickly, I got the idea to just use the Zweihander's Reach to do a jumping attack on him. And get him out of the way quickly enough. Ribcage kind of bounced off my head there. That's kind of funny looking. So Archer kind of in the darkness that'll, you know, shoot at you in that doorway. You kind of have to position yourself just right to where he can't shoot you. And I wait on that Black Knight to make his second appearance and... This particular time, things go a lot better for me. Parry that stamina attack. And slam him with my Chaos Swihander, which one-shots him. I was really happy about that. Get a white Titanite chunk for my troubles. That'll come in handy when upgrading my Divine Halberd. Deal with this stupid archer that's, you know, hiding in the shadows. And instead of taking the linear pathway, you get by this corpse and you just kind of drop down. This is the serves as a shortcut, but also takes you to a useful item. And 
all these skeleton uh, column things, whatever you call them. I don't know what they're called, but a bunch of them will appear and surround you, but of course, you got the Chaos Y-Hander. Good old base cannon. Just destroying. Oh yeah, they do have a chance to drop White Titanite chunks, so if you need to farm for them, that's actually not a bad place to start. Get the Covetous Silver Serpent Ring, which is similar to the Gold's, uh, the Covetous Gold Serpent Ring. Except instead of uh, increasing your item discovery, it increases the amount of souls that you get when you kill enemies. So, if you're going to be sitting in an area farming for a long time, if you want to get extra souls or something, it can be useful for that. And at this point, I decide to kind of show the uh, descriptions of the different miracles I've gotten so far. Replenishment is kind of like casting a regeneration, a health regeneration miracle can be really useful in a prolonged fight. Force, like I said, it's like Wrath of the Gods, where you get like 21 casts of it, but it doesn't do any damage. Wrath of the Gods, you get three casts, and it does a lot of damage. Pops off really fast, really good at taking uh, people by surprise in PvP. Yeah. But at this point, I haven't demonstrated how it works. <laughs> but anyway, I'm continuing on with the area. Not, I haven't thought of it at this point while I was playing, but I need to be in human form for this next part. But I decided to go ahead and uh, explore the Tomb of the Giants as is anyway. Even though I'm kind of thinking like I'm forgetting something. Like, what, what have I not done? But you jump down from there and go down this way. And there's a couple of different treasures I have in mind I want to get. There's a shield, which... I don't know, it's honestly... I've never used it. I don't think it's that useful. But more importantly, there's a free white titanite chunk you can get, so... Kind of thinking of where I need to go. I go back up that ladder and kind of backtrack my way up these slopes. There's a lot of uh, the giant skeletons down here, but if you just kind of hug the wall, for the most part, they'll leave you alone. The soul of a brave warrior. You can see that... Uh, four-legged skeleton in the background. Surprisingly enough, if you just hug the walls, they'll pretty much always leave you alone. And this little cubby hole here, we got the white titanite chunk I was after. The cast light finally ran out, so I'm gonna cast it again. But see how long that lasted? That's such a useful spell to have. Like on most any build, for a minimum of 14 intelligence can really help you with all kinds of stuff because of the utility spells. There is actually a bonfire down here if you choose to get it. I don't actually rest at it because it's easier for me just to start at the other one and climb down than it is for me to start from that one. It's just because it's what I'm used to. I think during my first playthrough I used that bonfire, but then for the rest of the time I didn't because you can't warp to it, so and it's it's kinda like eh. Personally I don't think it's really necessary for it to be there, but whatever, I guess it helps some people. Come over to this narrow ledge here. This is the shield I was talking about, the effigy shield. Which has a little bit of interesting lore on it, but I don't know. Its abilities aren't all that great in my opinion. Starts out with really low stability. Its defenses aren't spectacular by any means. But apparently it guards against divine and lightning. And at this point in the game when you get it, I mean, you really don't have to guard against much lightning damage anymore. That was mainly with Ornstein and Smo. And then divine damage, I don't even know of any enemies that do divine damage on you. So, 
I cut out the run back, but I went and uh, went human for this part because there's an the NPC invader in, in this area that I wanted to get. Paladin Leroy, remember him? We summoned him for the catacombs for taking out the bone wheel skeletons and not really helping with uh, pinwheel or anything because pinwheel was easy enough to take down, but yeah. He totally invades us right here. <laughs> Who knows why? One of the original undead paladins. We get his weapon and shield from killing his phantom. And if you kill his phantom, you get a chance to get his armor set. Just like with Kirk, you know, and uh, Xanthus King Jeremiah. Gotta kill their phantoms to get their armors. And Paladin Leroy actually has kind of a cool armor set to me. At this point, strangely enough, you don't really need a light source anymore. It's weird, it's like the further down you've gone into the Tomb of the Giants now, all of a sudden, I mean, if that cast light happened to run out, I'd still be able to see, unlike the other parts of Tomb of the Giants. come down here into this pit of bones and other dead things and there are a ton of pinwheel clones presumably all the clones that he tossed away during his experiments where he was trying to separate himself from his uh, wife and child get a white titanite slab down there in this little cubby hole but in trying to use Grave Lord Nito's power to, you know, separate the child and mother from the father, he just ended up making a bunch of doppelgangers and he threw them all down here. At least that's the way I understand it. They're all easy enough to kill. It's just getting surrounded by them and when they all start throwing their spells at you, it can get a little overwhelming. <clears throat> you'll notice those little small skeleton babies they continually spawn and they're they can be a little difficult to hit but they drop humanity so they're useful for that much they can also inflict toxic on you which I'd forgotten about until they do it here in just a minute get another white titanite chunk yeah <laughs> got toxic really quick now these uh, pinwheel doppelgangers, they actually respawn and they're a good way to farm the different masks. Like if you notice, I got the Mask of the Father just a little bit ago. When I'd originally killed Pinwheel, I got the Mask of the Mother. There's one other mask that you can get called the Mask of the Child. And if you farm them, you can get all three masks and duplicates of them even. They'll also drop White Titanite chunks and if I'm not mistaken, they have a rare chance to drop the White Titanite slabs as well. So there's that. And there's a summon here. I was kind of surprised to see that. Don't know. I've never really seen that many people try to co-op for this boss here. But if you tear this up and go through that boss fog, there you are. That'll be the boss of the Tomb of the Giants, Gravelord Nito. Which I'll be going up against at a later time. Back to Firelink Shrine. <laughs> Going over the items I got for killing the Phantom of Paladin Leroy. The Grant, which is a great club type of weapon with huge stat requirements but also huge scaling. It is a divine weapon that does both physical and uh, divine damage with a 50 strength requirement to one hand it and a 30 faith requirement it requires a lot of investment it's pretty much specific to strength faith builds but I think it's a pretty cool weapon I like it and then the sanctus which has a lot more generous stat requirements that gives you a constant health region kinda like the way the grass crest shield gives you stamina region 
and if you combine that with replenishment, then you're going to be regenerating health very quickly. Combine that further with like a weapon like the server or something like that, or the uh, meat cleaver that gives you a little bit of HP back on a, a successful hit, you'll be a regen monster in PvP. So at this point, I warp on over to the Undead Parish. Gonna be giving old Andre that large divine ember. Gonna send my divine halberd from a plus five to a plus six and reinforce it up to plus ten. Yeah, only missing two white chunks, which I'll easily farm for off camera. done all four areas of the four lords next time I'm gonna be entering the DLC area after doing a couple more things in the regular game but as always thank you all so very much for watching I'll see you soon with more Dark Souls Remastered and until then y'all take care <laughs>